Hey guys, video for you today is uh, doing an oil filter housing gasket on my E53 X5. Uh, starting off here, pulling the air box off, we got a 10 millimeter socket and a flathead screwdriver to undo the clamp. Unplug the mass airflow sensor and remove the air box out of the way. This is a 2001 BMW X5 and it's got the M54 engine, the 3 liter and every one of these that I've owned has leaked from that gasket. So the next thing I'm doing here is removing the fan and fan shroud. I just pop the plastic rivets out of the fan shroud and then I grab my 32 millimeter wrench and a pry bar to hold the fan and, and crack it loose and spin it off by hand. Uh, so now the fan's out of the way, we can take the belt off. I use a Torx on the tensioner here, and I always tap it in because it's it's been off a few times, this, uh, and it it slips pretty easy. I later found out there's a nut, a 16 millimeter, you can use next to that on the same tensioner and it's a little easier than using the Torx, but uh, I have a, a rod I stick through there to hold it open when it's off. So after that we can remove that tensioner out of the way and start removing the alternator. So to remove the alternator there's two 16 millimeter bolts that run through it and you can see me ratchet for a while on this one. It's a pretty long bolt. Sometimes they can be stuck in there a little bit. Um, so one of the bolts runs through the tensioner as well. So you remove that tensioner and then the bottom bolt on the alternator. And then on the back side of the alternator is a 17 millimeter nut. I don't show it in the video but disconnect your battery first before you take that off otherwise you could short it out but yeah there's a 17 millimeter nut it's plastic coated on the back side of the alternator and then there's a plug-in on the alternator as well that needs to be unplugged and then in order to get it up out of there there's a coolant hose running back to the heater You'll see me take that off right here, or, or actually this is me taking off the nut on the back of the alternator, but I'll move that coolant hose out of the way and then the power steering reservoir as well will have to get moved out of the way. And that's held on by two 13 millimeter bolts. So, so far I've got a 13 millimeter out, I've got a 16 millimeter 10 millimeter flat edge screwdriver not a whole lot of special tools or anything but you'll need a, a few tools for the job so here's the alternator there's a couple different kinds that could be on your X5 uh, once that's out of the way we're gonna unbolt the power steering pump power steering pump is held on with I believe they're 13 millimeter bolts. They're pretty long. Now I I've done this job a few times before, but for whatever reason I forgot about a bolt. And I'll show you guys coming up here where that bolt is. But there's two main bolts going through the top of the power steering pump through the oil filter housing aluminum here, and then there's one from the backside that faces up towards me here that I I forgot about so I had the whole housing loose um, and I you know didn't didn't have that bolt out so I figured that out oil filter housing itself there's there's the hole where that thing bolts up but here's the oil filter housing after I removed it it's like a square cut o-ring that seals it and they leak like crazy uh, you could also see the bracket there where that bolt goes through for the power steering pump. All in all, not too bad to get out. Um, 
So once it's out, I kind of clean up the gasket surface and pull the O-ring out of there and clean that up a little bit. I always use grease on my rubber seals like that, the O-ring style seals. So I grease that up, put the new one in, and then the reassembly is basically uh, reverse the removal here. So new gasket going in here, uh, everything's cleaned up. I didn't spend a lot of time cleaning things because this thing's not due for an oil change, so I didn't even pull the filter out of the housing. Uh, the other vehicles I've done this on, I put the thing in the parts washer and spent a bunch of time cleaning it up, but I plan on just bringing this to the car wash and, and blasting the side of the engine when I'm all done. So I just wanted to get it to stop dripping out of the driveway, so I just just replaced it and didn't spend a lot of time cleaning. Another thing that could be done is, you know, brake cleaner on the side of the engine there and hose that down with the compressed air. But anyways, here I go. I'm putting it back in. I forgot to mention on the disassembly, there's a an oil line and two plug-ins on that housing. The oil line runs up to the valve cover that's held on by a 17 millimeter banjo bolt. And it's got aluminum crush washers that I just reuse. You might want to replace them on yours. It's kind of up to you. But crush washers I usually reuse. And then there's a, a oil pressure sensor on the back side of it that needs to be plugged in as well. So I'm just putting it back in here. Got my greased up o-ring. Um, the 13 millimeter bolts. Had a little confusion about which ones went where because I just threw them in a pile on my toolbox. You might want to get a little more organized than that, but we got it done here. Um, yeah, so 13 millimeter. Get those tightened down, and then we'll uh, put the power steering back, pump back on, and put it back together. I use my impact to run the bolts in as you can see and then there's a few that I couldn't really get to but I always snug everything down by hand and make tighten it evenly if you're not you don't have a good feel for that kind of thing it's probably a good idea to torque these down but uh, I just use my impact run them in and then and then snug them up by hand um, kind of the same with all the other bolts I don't really torque anything on this job I just kind of snug everything down good had real good luck doing it this way, so uh, hopefully everything's fine. So now we're getting everything lined up on that power steering pump, lifted into place. I'll put that bottom bolt in first to kind of snug it up into, into place. I'll put the other two bolts in loosely before I tighten it down. And then move on to putting the alternator in.
So I messed around a little bit there. I dropped a couple bolts and had to do some fishing. Um, but we found them all and then uh, move on. Power steering pump's now installed. I'm tightening things down. And then uh, we'll move on to the next step, which is the alternator. So the alternator, I'll grab it here in a second once I'm done tightening it down. Uh, the alternator is held on by those 16 millimeter bolts. Here you see me put on the power steering reservoir too early. I end up taking that back off. I think I dropped a bolt on that job too and had to do some more fishing, but uh, these things happen. So here you see, I can't figure out which way it goes in it's because I put that reservoir back in. Pop that out of the way here and then we'll be able to drop the alternator down into place. Before putting the alternator in, it's a good idea to make sure you have your oil pressure sensor plugged in on the back side of that oil filter housing. Um, and then make sure your wires aren't buried for the alternator, the, the two pin plug and then the main battery wire. So get that into place. I usually put the bottom bolt in first and then you could rotate it up to line up the top bolt. And the top bolt shares the same bolt as the tensioner. So get all that lined up, get the bolts started, make sure your wires are in place, and bolt your alternator on. So my alternator's on, that tensioner is on, I'm bolting on the reservoir after finding my bolts. And now we're stringing the belt into place. Not a bad idea to take a picture of your belt before you take it off, otherwise you can tell tell which way it goes by looking at the, the ribbed pulleys versus the smooth pulleys. It's got to go around the ribbed pulleys and then the, the smooth pulleys that go against the back side of the belt. So. If you look at it that way, you can you can figure out which way the belt goes back on. I also I didn't pull the AC belt, so I didn't pull the belt all the way off. It was still around the crankshaft. But I'm just putting that belt back on. If you're replacing the belt, you'll have to pull the AC belt, which has a tensioner. It's pretty easy to to pull that one once you're in there though. Uh, if you don't have anything to hold that tensioner open, this can be very hard to get the belt on. But uh, an Allen wrench works great if you, like a, just an L wrench, if you don't have the rod. I got a rod that come, it came with a tensioner that I bought that I just keep around as a special tool. And if it holds that tensioner open for you, you can just put the belt right into place and make sure it's in all the grooves before you, before you, put your breaker bar on that and then uh, 
on the tensioner and, and pull the pin out of it. So now I'm making sure I get the bolt back in that coolant hose, make sure everything's plugged in. I got my 17 wrench in my hand there for tightening down that starter wire on the back of the alternator. And then uh, basically just button it back up here. We'll put the air box back on and crawl into the trunk and, and hook the battery back up and that's it oil filter housing gasket make sure you check your oil when you're done um, if it's about a quart low on your 230,000 mile x5 that's normal um, just kind of make sure it's on the stick Got ahead of myself a little bit before we put the air box on. I'll put the fan shroud on. I guess it doesn't matter which order you go in. Uh, but the fan and shroud, it's easiest if you just kind of hold them together and drop them into place at the same time. Uh, the fan shroud has a few notches at the bottom that you got to get lined up. You kind of got to angle it down and in. And then I usually look with a light to see if I got it. And the, the fan I'll spin on by hand as far as I can to before I get the wrench out. But here you see I, I missed on one side with the, the fan shroud, so I get my light over there and get everything lined up. There's also a plug-in on that fan for a sensor that tells if the fan's running, I believe. And then there's also a, a wire hanger for the uh, electric fan on the side of that fan shroud that I, I failed to mention earlier but not a big deal you'll notice it and then I, I got the plastic rivets that hold the fan shroud on and once the fan spun on my hand I'll just give it a snug with the wrench make sure we're good I don't have the special tool I just use a pry bar and a, and a big wrench but the special tool would be nice it's just a thinner thinner wrench and a thin holder so it fits in there a little better but I've done three of them now with my pry bar and wrench method so now we're back to the airbox one thing to pay attention to here is make sure you get get the airbox on the boot all the way not a bad idea to check that boot for cracks while you're in there and then tighten down your your clamp Make sure you plug in your mass airflow sensor or it will really scare you. And these things, it'll give you a trans fail safe message with that mass airflow sensor unplugged. You'll get a check engine light. And I did that before and I was all worried I had a transmission problem, but popped the hood and realized I forgot to plug that in. So uh, once you get it all buttoned up, crawl into the trunk, hook up the battery, like I said, and. Uh, you're good to go oil filter housing gasket um, also did the valve cover gasket on this one did a video about that and that should take care of my oil leaks for the time being go ahead and uh, head over to my channel check out my other videos uh, got some E39 videos I'm also going to be doing another video on this vehicle doing the center bearing for the the rear drive shaft um, so keep an eye out for that one. Thanks for watching, guys.